Hi, my name is Matthew Deans. I'm a, a vocational rehabilitation counselor with the Virginia Department of Rehabilitative Services. Um, today I want to talk to you about uh, the eligibility and prioritization process of accessing the state vocational rehabilitation services. Um, currently I'm working as a statewide coordinator uh, helping to support the VR offices in our state to, uh, with technical assistance and training of counselors in the offices throughout the state. Um, I've worked with DRS um, in Virginia uh, way back when I was 16 years old and as a client of the agency uh, as a result of a car accident that I was involved in. Um, I've served as a VR counselor uh, working with adults, uh, having adult caseload as well as a uh, transition uh, caseload uh, serving five uh, high schools in the Chesterfield County area of Virginia. Um, Today we're going to be hopefully um, helping to dispel some myths that may be involved in the uh, eligibility uh, and, and referral process depending on um, your school systems. Hopefully uh, the following questions will, will be answered uh, as a result of this presentation. You'll understand that what uh, vocational rehabilitation services are and why you may need them. Um, you'll understand what the referral application and eligibility determination process is for VR agencies and you'll know what to expect when you approach VR for services. So what is vocational rehabilitation? Basically it's a process which enables persons with disabilities to overcome barriers to their employment. Uh, services range and, and are very comprehensive and vocational rehabilitation isn't necessarily only provided by VR agencies. There are several different uh, service providers in the community that also uh, are considered involved in the vocational rehabilitation process. Um, VR services range uh, from vocational evaluations to job placement, career counseling, vocational and academic training, rehabilitation and assistive technology, physical restoration and personal assistance services. Um, VR works closely with private and nonprofit centers for independent living and as I said, as well as private community rehabilitation providers, or CRPs, known nationally. Here in Virginia, we call them ESOs, or Employment Service Organizations, otherwise known as job coaching and supported employment. We also work with medical equipment vendors, um, as well as community service boards, to help serve the needs of the student or client. Um, so vocational rehabilitation services are supports the needs of individuals based on their functional limitations. Um, employment for vocational rehabilitation purposes is defined as working independently in the community earning minimum wage or better. And that's the goal at least. Transition services are specialized VR services for youth with disabilities who are still enrolled in post-secondary high school education programs. Um, transition services help prepare students for their transition from high school to employment and life after high school. Um, transition services include the full range of regular VR services based on the student's timeline of their transition planning. Typically, consultations with IEP teams are very normal during, for transition. Um, meeting with students and, or parents that may be interested in services and learning more about what vocational rehabilitation is. Um, it's often for uh, transition counselors to provide evaluations uh, that are specific for the student to help determine what their career goals are and what supports they may need to pursue those goals. Um, employment supports when the student is ready to go to work involve a, a coordination and collaboration of VR agencies as well as the school systems, parents, and other providers such as community service boards are all part of the, what we call the transition team. So when should the transition team include VR services? Basically our motto is early and often. How early should you start? There's really no such thing as too early as far as transition is, goes. If you have questions or concerns it's important that you speak up and ask questions uh, someone in, in who is uh, involved with uh, the VR agency. You can ask your school teacher or case manager uh, as well as the local office um, is, is easily found um, in, the, in the directory. 
Um, it's ideally the transition in, involves vocational rehab agencies three years out from graduation. Uh, and graduation uh, is a sometimes a moving target, uh, but basically that means exiting high school by either obtaining a high school diploma or accepting a special education diploma or certificate or aging out at the age of 21. Students' goals frequently change, as I said, uh, resulting in the DR process lasting uh, anywhere from several months to even years. Uh, it's not uncommon for transition uh, cases to last multiple years because you have to take into account uh, picking up a student in high school who may be interested in going on to college or additional training programs but then going on to employment. Transition services from the VR agencies uh, carry that student from high school all the way to that first job or that agreed upon employment goal. So what to expect with regards to VR services and the VR culture? Um, transition counselors tend to have large caseloads. As I said, they are working with students who are in high school um, and they are referred um, on a regular basis and consistently, um, which is a good thing. Counselors must serve every open active case on their caseload. And it's important that you keep that in mind as uh, it's not uncommon for a transition counselor to carry uh, a caseload of 150 or more uh, clients. Now those clients are all in some continuum of services. Often uh, a large portion of those are still in high school and so services are more um, consultation and, uh, and evaluation as opposed to more intense supports or services that may be needed for pursuing employment or obtaining training while on the job. Um, it's important to also understand that services may be delayed uh, due to a lack of resources. And resources in the terms of time uh, on, the, on the part of the, count, the counselor to serve all the client's needs uh, that are on the caseload, as well as resources with regards to funding. Funding uh, changes every year. Um, a, a large portion of the funding for VR services come from the federal government, as well as the state. Um, government. So um, those things do have a tendency to affect how, um, how what the capacity for uh, counselors to serve uh, clients that, that come to the agency. You can help your counselor and show them that you're motivated by uh, being an advocate for yourself. You know, you are your own best advocate as far as uh, it goes. It's important that you follow up regularly, especially if you're unsure of what your status is in the process. And it's important that you promptly respond to all phone calls or letters that may be sent to you by your, VR, by your VR agency. Services are designed for working in the real world. Um, part of VR culture sets expectations high based on employer expectations in the community. We um, partner with employers um, on a regular basis to understand what it is they need from workers. And then we then take that information back to our clients uh, to help them understand what it is that they're expected on the, on the job. Typically, employers expect about 100% effort. Anything less than that, you may be fired. I say that because um, sometimes we have issues with uh, attendance at school. Uh, and these are uh, raised concerns uh, during uh, the vocational rehab process because they may be uh, having issues at work. And um, you don't necessarily get um, 10 days of uh, absent at, at on, a, on the job, as you would say in, a, in, in your school program. So it's important that as you access VR services that you understand what the culture and expectations of VR has for their clients. The basic expectation is that you want to work and that you need services because, that you, because of, of your disability. Um, you should not take your services for granted. The reality in most states is that transition counselors have large caseloads and serve several different uh, clients at a time. Another important difference between school programs and services for folks with disabilities and adult programs is a shift between a service system that's based on entitlement to a, a system that's based on eligibility. 
Uh, under the federal law, uh, special education services are considered entitlement in the sense that by law, services are provided to you on the basis that you have a disability. Um, students have services until they age out or get a diploma. And st schools are, re are required to provide a free and appropriate public education for all eligible um, special education students. When you look at the vocational rehab services uh, with regards to the shift uh, documentation is needed in order to prove your eligibility. That includes documentation of your actual disability from school records or doctor's records, and we'll talk more about that in a second, but also documentation that you actually can work. So just because you have a disability doesn't necessarily mean you will be eligible for services. And that's that understanding that um, you may um, need to have to wait for services. Not everyone who applies for, for VR services are eligible. As I said, they must meet the eligibility criteria. Um, and services are provided only if the agency itself has enough staff, capacity, and resources to serve those who approach the agency for services. Um, and, and we'll go into a little bit about what happens when, a, when an agency, state agency, is unable to meet the, the, the demands of the, uh, of the clients that approach the agency. Um, what, and they go into what's called an order selection. So the basic eligibility criteria for vocational rehab services are that you're eligible to work in the United States, and that includes uh, citizens and non-citizens with a work permit. Um, you'll need documentation of residence for both. Uh, typically, we look for a government ID or proof of uh, address, things of that nature. Um, the second thing is that you have a documented physical or mental disability or impairment that results in a substantial impediment or barrier to employment. VR services are needed in order to achieve employment. Uh, you have to be able to demonstrate that although you have a disability, um, that impairment may be minimal or uh, that, that services aren't clear as far as why you need services in order to go to work. Um, and the last is that the applicants for, for services, because there are state agencies, must live, work, or go to school in that VR state. And for um, certain individuals that ha receive uh, government benefits such as SSI or SSDI, uh, they are assumed to meet the first two criteria um, because of the eligibility criteria for those programs, um, and, but they're still required documentation that the our services are needed um, and that they still um, live in the current state that they're in. Um, the, with regards to um, not the, the counselor pre can presume that they can work with VR supports uh, and with, with the rare occasion that there is clear or convincing evidence that suggests otherwise. Typically this is the case more extensive workplace uh, evaluations will be conducted unless that these present a risk to the client or to the uh, persons around them. And those are very rare situations. Um, and as I said, not all people who have a disability need VR services to go to work, especially those that have very minimal disabilities or their disability doesn't present any limitations as they pursue employment goals. As I said, the order of selection is, a, is a, an official process uh, or statement that states make for uh, basically stating that the VR agencies do not have enough resources to serve everyone that applies for services. Um, eligible clients that are, are it, individuals that apply for services and are found eligible are then prioritized further based on the severity of their disability. So you have to not only document that you have a disability, but how does that disability affect you? And that's where we get into the, the discussions about functional limitations. Um, the, this includes an assessment of records, intake observations of the counselor, and any discussions with the students, parents, or, or referral sources that can provide further information as to exactly how the disability diagnosis affects their functional ability to pursue employment. Um, and the VR looks at possible, uh, seven possible work-related functions that can be limited by a disability. Um, we serve those who need us most first, 
Uh, we have a term for that. Consider, they are considered most severe disabilities, or MSD. And the, um, with regards to the serious functional limitations, uh, these are things that dis where, how the disabilities affect individuals' ability to function, as it says, the, f the functional limitations. This, the, this describes how the disability um, uh, affects their work goals uh, and their ability to go to work. Um, the order selection priority base is uh, based on the, num the total number of different functional limitations. So as, as I said, there are seven different categories of functional limitations, um, and services for VR are d directly related to those limitations. So, uh, for, for example, someone who has uh, limitations in mobility, then that would indicate that the services needed would need to help them overcome the limitations presented by that mobility, dis uh, the, the, the disability that results in mobility limitations. Uh, as I said, uh, with the example of mobility, these are the seven functional limitations uh, related to work. Number one is communication uh, or expressing and, and or receiving information. Um, this, this may occur if someone, for example, were, may not be able to interpret language uh, or understand directions or uh, be able to read uh, an email or an, a job application. That would indicate a, um, a, a communication-related functional limitation. Um, number two is self-direction, and this is re resulting uh, with regards to planning and organizing activities related to work. Uh, it could be their ability to maintain a work schedule uh, week, week after week. It could be their uh, capacity to arrange transportation, uh, and that, may, that would include you know, scheduling transportation ahead of time or making sure that there's a plan in place to get to work. Um, number three is self-care. And as it is pretty self-explanatory, this is in regards to uh, anything related to the personal care of the, of the person with a disability. Uh, things such as um, hygiene also come up uh, with regards to this functional ability. Um, number four is mobility, as I said, and this is basically the function of getting from place to place. That includes within the home, uh, into a car or into a vehicle, out of a vehicle and onto a job site. And then within the work setting, how do they get from place to place? It, would that present barriers to employment? And if so, that may indicate a functional limitation uh, with regards to that disability. Uh, some other things that may come up with regards to mobility is their inability to get a license as a result of um, failing the driver's assessment uh, on a, several times or taking a class and not being able to absorb the information without specialized services or supports for that. Um, number five is uh, interpersonal skills. This is uh, basically the ability to get along with others. Um, you may find this uh, as an indicator when we see clients that are acting out in, in school or they may get frustrated and uh, may express that in an inappropriate way that may result in um, uh, issues that, uh, on the job setting or, or, um, or, or, you know, in the future if they were to work. Um, so number six is work tolerance. This is the ability to tolerate work activities. So there, this includes the physical ability to lift and carry and walk. And uh, it also includes psychological tolerance related to uh, stress. So, uh, for example, jobs that uh, tend to have a busy um, nature such as like Walmart and Christmas time. Uh, if someone with a disability would really frust be frustrated um, and, and get uh, confused in those types of situations, that would be an indicator that, the, that their ability to tolerate certain work settings would be limited. Um, and the last one is work skills, and this is basically their ability to learn work skills. Uh, sometimes there may be a need for uh, a special visual aids or task lists to help them learn and, and commit the information to memory. Um, so as, as students or clients are learning job skills, um, if for some reason you had the uh, concern that the supervisor on the job alone would not be able to help this student learn the job, or they may get frustrated easily or say, I don't have enough time to devote to this person based on what they need, um, that would present some employment barriers related to work skills. 
So as I said, uh, the priority categories, um, are, there are four priority categories. Um, the first priority category is what we consider most significantly disabled. Uh, this is defined as three serious functional limitations um, in three or more areas. Uh, they also have to demonstrate that they may require multiple services, that's defined as two or more, over an extended period of time, and that's defined as six months or more to achieve employment. That six months or more, uh, that starts at the moment that the uh, student or, or client is actually receiving services, not necessarily when they apply for services, but at the moment when we have determined what they need in order to go to work, um, and they, that time period to, uh, to obtain employment uh, may be uh, extended uh, beyond six months or more, based on our best guess. Um, there are number two and three are what we consider significantly disabled, and um, as, as you can probably presume, serious limitations in one or more areas for number three, and, not, and serious limitations in two or more would be number the priority category two. Again, this, these two categories still require that, that uh, the client demonstrates that they'll need multiple services over an extended period of time in order to achieve employment. And then the last category would be persons with disabilities that do not demonstrate functional limitations or serious functional limitations as a result of their disability. Um, and they may not also uh, need m a multiple services over an extended period of time. And those would be the last priority uh, of services as a result of an order of selection. So th the following factors um, are not included when one ap applies for services uh, with the VR agency. Um, the duration of residence, and that refers to how long you've lived in that particular state or how long you're planning on living in that state. That information should not be taken into account as a result uh, to determine eligibility for services. Eligibility cannot be based solely on the diagnosis or the, the disability alone. Again, we look at the disability related functional limitations, not just the diagnosis. Uh, we don't look at age, gender, race, color, or national origin as we assess the uh, eligibility for services. Uh, we also assess a, a eligibility without regards to the type of employment goals they may have or outcomes that they have as they approach services. Um, we also do not uh, consider one eligible or not eligible on the basis of what services they're going to need or what the costs of those services are. We do not consider employment uh, related costs as we um, uh, determine one eligible for services. And the, lastly, we do not consider the income level of the applicant or their family as we determine eligibility for VR services. Now I should say that income information may impact how services are funded later such as supported employment training or tuition for college or transportation to go to work. But that's not considered during the eligibility process. That's later down the road when services are determined based on an, an assessment. The big thing is don't let the wait list scare you off. We see this every, uh, every time we have a wait list in, here in Virginia. Referrals tend to drop off. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because our wait lists tend to only last for a few months. Uh, and if you think about the transition plan of a student in high school, it, their services aren't uh, emergency related, so to speak. Their services are going to last through high school and beyond. So uh, it, in, it, for the best uh, you know, transition plan approach is to, um, is to consider uh, an idea of vocational rehabilitation taking at least two and a half years. Here in Virginia, the average open case uh, that results in a successful employment outcome was two and a half years old. And that's from the date that they received services or signed their employment plan to when they found a job and were closed, closed their case. So that's important to keep in mind as well as you approach VR that has a wait list is that this isn't a quick process. It takes time in order to get through uh, to determine what supports you need to provide those supports, and then to find employment in the community. With regards to that interesting data as well is that the average non-disabled worker takes about 10 months to find work, or they spend 10 months in unemployment 
before they're able to find a job. Now you can only guess that a person with a disability is going to take much longer than that. Uh, so that's another thing to, important to keep in mind as you're um, considering whether to apply as a result of a wait list or not. Um, also, uh, typically special education students are very appropriate referrals for vocational rehab services. Um, their transition plans uh, should anticipate all these factors with regards to whether VR services are needed or not. So with regards to the eligibility process, um, step one is that the student is referred to VR through a form or student referral form or even a verbal referral. Um, as, a, as an adult counselor, we got referrals from the, from the community. People would just walk in and say, hey, I need services. I've been told to come here because I have a disability, and that's okay. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have paperwork in order to receive services or, or in order to, to be considered a referral. Uh, however, you should keep in mind the, the referral process with your particular school system uh, because it's very helpful for us to determine eligibility and to understand one's disability when we know all the uh, uh, persons involved in the process. So once you're referred, VR will then respond to the referral, typically by letter, inviting you to a meeting or an intake. Um, at that point, the student then meets with the VR counselor to discuss services. They may or may not apply for services at that time. They may just be getting information. Uh, the VR counselor may determine at that point that um, they're at the wrong place, and they may all agree that uh, at this point, VR is not necessarily needed. So, but at, at some point, though, uh, students will, will decide that uh, VR is needed and the counselor will also agree that, that, um, that services are, 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 are potentially, uh, the, the person will be eligible for services. So then the student has to sign, officially sign the application for VR services. Um, and this initiates their application. So at that point, eligibility is determined within the next 60 days. That's a, that's a uh, deadline, it's not a, um, it's not a goal. Uh, so it's important that there, um, if additional assessments or documents are needed, uh, that they are provided in a timely manner. And this is why I suggest that you uh, know your status in the eligibility process at all times, that if there's anything that you can do to help with records, often that helps. And um, it's important that you uh, check in on a regular basis so that you can keep the ball rolling. So. Parents sometimes will say, you know, I'm concerned that my student will never be able to work independently in the, in the community. Um, and that's a uh, sometimes uh, very appropriate or normal response with regards to certain disabilities. Um, it's good to, to know that voc rehab presumes that all applicants are employable in the sense that they, um, with services, uh, that their, their ability to work um, is, is, is worth um, determining uh, what services they need, basically. So, in very, as I said, in very rare occasions, uh, employability is, is concerned based on, as I said, clear and convincing evidence that they can't work independently, even with VR supports. Um, employability is not based on just a test or just a file review. Uh, it's, it's based on various work experiences, and if those don't exist, we provide those to you through what we call trial work assessments. So if, if employability is a concern for, cert, for certain students and the VR counselor agrees that I am also concerned that, that they may not be able to go to work, uh, they may do uh, what's called trial work assessments where they'll um, work uh, such as uh, you know, at, at the local retail store or uh, in, a, in a different setting in the community and we'll provide the services and supports that we would as if they were eligible and try to see if that uh, we can see some progress and some positive information that suggests that this could be possible. Um, so, uh, but it's, it, at some point, it's important to remember that, that VR services uh, are designed to provide short-term supports to clients to eventually work on their own independently in the community. So what, what to expect when you're working with VR is that all VR clients both want and need services in order to go to work. Uh, therefore, clients are expected to contact VR to request services, to respond to all meeting requests, to attend all meetings, or call as soon as possible to, to cancel or reschedule a meeting. Uh, they're expected to help contact doctors for disability documentation, 
Uh, they're expected to participate in evaluations as needed. And you should always know where your application is in the process. When an individual applies to VR services, there are several criteria considered in order to determine if they're eligible for services and what priority they will have in the state under an order of selection. So as I said, additional assessments may be needed due to a lack of existing disability documentation. We may send you to a psycholo psychologist for testing. Uh, we may uh, request additional trial work experiences if, em if employability is an issue. Um, when there, uh, ag again, is there evidence that the ability or capacity to work despite services uh, becomes a concern. So why do you need services? It's okay if you don't know this answer. Uh, your counselor is, is specially trained to help you uh, explore this together and they will do that at, from the first meeting by asking you several questions uh, about your past history. It's important that you be open and honest with the counselor. They may ask you questions like why did you lose your last job? This, the information from these uh, answers is very helpful for us to know what, what went wrong and what we can do differently as we move forward. Uh, we may ask why are you unemployed? Uh, we may ask, how have you ever tried to get a job? Uh, and we may want to know, what do you think you need in order to get a job? It's important as a person with a disability that, we, uh, that, that you know and understand what your limitations are and therefore what supports and services you need from VR. If not, it's important that you ask questions like, what can you do to help me? Uh, what, what services do you provide uh, that can help uh, me get a job? Uh, and our, our number one uh, service uh, is, is vocational counseling and guidance by the, by the vocational counselor. Um, they are the uh, center point to several different uh, services and, and assessments and uh, community providers in the, in the, in the VR process. Um, and it, it, it's pivotal that the services are received uh, are um, involved with the VR counselor. So uh, with regards to obtaining documentation and records, we may uh, look at school records um, along with the referrals. Those should come at, at the same time. It's very helpful and, and it speeds the process up. Um, it's helpful to have uh, close contact with the office support staff that are at the school. Um, as, a, as a transition counselor, I, I had the secretaries of the special education departments phone numbers and emails. Uh, as opposed to trying to go through a teacher or through a case manager, uh, the, the relationship was built with the records staff, and I was able to get records very quickly as a result of that, which sped up the process of determining eligibility. Um, students and parents may need to help VR get, ser get records, as I said, uh, with regards to HIPAA. Sometimes doctors or uh, other medical providers have uh, strict laws and, and limitations as to what they can release to other people. Uh, but they can give you your own records and then th you can turn those over to VR. Um, it's important to know the referral process of your school system as I said before and if you don't know you can ask your case manager or the local VR office about how to access services. How VR keeps students engaged. And student engagement is important um, throughout the process in order to help students um, maintain the motivation to pursue employment. Uh, counselors typically will meet with the student for the first time and then uh, alone and then meet with the parents afterwards. Uh, it's important that we get a, a, an understanding of what the family dynamics are, how students uh, may, may, may act um, in front of their parents and then al alone or away from their parents. Um, students may be asked, uh, well, why, why were you referred to VR or what did they tell you that you needed services? Um, uh, in the first meeting, it may just be a short meet and greet. There may not be an intake uh, at that point. There may not be an application for services. It may just be an opportunity for the counselor to get to know the student. This is something that, that takes time. And, um, it, you know, typically many appointments are, are used to help keep the student engaged as well as uh, assess and, and gather information uh, that may not be readily available in the first impressions. Uh, additional activities for students may uh, include uh, weekly social job clubs or weekly job searching activities. Uh, and students are also encouraged to in visit the, the VR office, which may have a, what's what we call an employment resource library 
that has all kinds of information with regards to disability, with regards to services, with regards to community services in the, uh, in the local area, as well as what um, supports or um, employers are in the uh, local area that are hiring. Um, so we maintain a, a, a library of information at, at the office to help our clients um, pursue employment. So during the uh, application process, uh, I, it's important that you don't screen yourself out thinking that you won't be eligible or that because of the wait list you're not going to get services or you have to wait forever. Um, VR counselors want to help you be successful, period. Um, counselors are creative problem solvers that think out of the box. Um, oftentimes I find myself as a, as a counselor trying to convince the client that they can work or even their parent. Trust me, your son or daughter can work um, because I've seen it happen. Uh, you are typically in a very small, uh, you know, confined area. Uh, as a person with a disability, you may not know someone else like you, um, but with, with the VR agencies are, are very experienced and have seen a variety of different disabilities as well as services. And we're constantly trying to uh, sharpen our, um, our ability to serve clients, especially those with more significant um, impairments that we're beginning to see more and more of. Um, and so the um, eligibility decisions uh, typically are made as soon as possible. There's been times when I've been able to determine eligibility at the first meeting. By the end of the meeting, I knew that they were eligible, the decisions were made, and we were able to make another appointment to get started with services. Um, so that you don't have to wait 60 days to, to receive services, or even don't wait 60 days to check on services, or check on your application for services. Um, throughout the whole process, it's important that you ask, what can I do in the meantime? This shows motivation on your part to work and to to receive services. Uh, it shows that you um, are dedicated to this uh, process um, and it also um, helps yourself by uh, di doing, uh, as I say, two heads are better than one. Um, so as I said before, it's important that you know where you're at in the process and to help keep the ball rolling at all times if possible. Thank you very much.